in ages long forgotten. Light fought darkness for control of the world. Dark Dragon led the evil hordes of darkness. The Ancients fought back with the powers of light. Dark Dragon was defeated and cast into another dimension. The Lord of Darkness vowed to return in 1,000 years. Time passed, and Dark Dragon was forgotten by all. Ten centuries of peace ruled the land of Ruin. Until the Kingdom of Runefaust brought war and fear to Ruin. Hordes of evil creatures ravaged every land. Here and there, strongholds of good still held out, awaiting a hero who could wield the powers of light. Oh yeah, what's going on? It's me, Jerupidus, and today we're playing Shining Force, The Legacy of Great Intention. This is a game for the Sega Genesis. Wow, Dark Dragon, Ancients, let's see now. What else does this old book say? Hmm, 1,000 years have passed since they vanquished Dark Dragon. And this book says Dark Dragon threatened to return right about now. I bet anything that Dark Dragon is behind the evil hordes of Runefaust. I need to tell someone about this, but who would listen to a kid like me? I think Dark Dragon's coming back. Will you help us? Come on, it'll be an adventure. And let's start a new game. And these are our save slots. You only get three because this is a Genesis game and there wasn't that much memory. Say, what shall I call you? Oh, you can call me Jerupidus. And there aren't quite enough letters for my name, as usual, but that's okay. I should have picked a shorter internet handle, I think. Nice to meet you, Jerupidus. I'm Simone. Come back often and tell me everything. And isn't Simone adorable? You need to get going. Evil spreads farther across Rune with every passing day. Chapter 1, The Rune Faust Invasion. Jerupidus? Jerupidus? Come on, kid, wake up. I didn't hit you that hard. Keep your guard up, kid. Those beasts of Runefaust will tear you to pieces. Okay, that's enough for today. You'd better take it easy for a while. No, Jerupidus, I think you've had enough for today. Well, I disagree. I'm ready for more. Well, Jerupidus, had enough swordplay for today? I don't know how you keep at it hour after hour. I'm dead tired after about 15 minutes. I feel like maybe that's an allusion to playing games all day, but I could be wrong about that. I could be overthinking it. And all these bookshelves are things you can search and read the titles of the books on them. So this one is Path to Master Swordsmanship, Warrior Techniques, and many more books. These are just teeny little uh, pieces of flavor text. Um, but I think they're fun, so we're going to try to search all of them. You have the makings of a great fighter, Jerupidus. You'll be tested soon enough. Lord Varios, the king is sent for you. You must come at once. Of course, lead the way, guardsman. I fear the worst, Jerupidus. Prepare yourself for battle immediately. That doesn't sound good. Did you see Varios' face? He went pale. Something really big is happening. Let's split up and see if we can't find out what's going on. I'll see you later. So that's Lo. He's our healer friend. We'll be talking to him a little later. So let's talk to everyone in town. I'm sick of feeling helpless. I'm going to ask Varios to train me to be a fighter. Let's check out this bookshelf. The Light and Darkness, How Green Was My Dragon, and many more books. Eh? What's a youngster like you doing moping around? Get out and fight evil. You got it, old man. <laughs> 
In fact, we are in the evil ass-kicking business, let me tell you. Back and forth, up and down. Man, I'm tired of guarding this chapel all day. It does sound like a boring job. The castle of Gardania lies just ahead. Varios went in just a while ago, so we're gonna wanna follow him there, but why don't we talk to everybody while we're here? Someday I hope to go to Manarina to become a mage. Well, that's interesting. There is a town called Manarina that you can learn to be a mage in. I wonder if we'll ever visit there. There's so many monsters outside the city gates, there's no escape. Yeah, I mean, if right outside the gates it was just packed with monsters, I would feel pretty afraid about that too. Hey there, youngster. My name is Gort. Care to hear my story? And we're gonna tell him yes. Thanks, no one talks to me anymore. All too busy. Wanna hear a secret? Yes, I do. I would love to hear a secret. Never trust anyone outside this city. Murderers and thieves, all of them. I ought to know, I used to be a great warrior. Been all over the world. Why, I have half a mind to go out again. Would if I got a good offer. Hmm. Pay the old man no heed, youngster. His mind isn't what it used to be. Yeah, if he's calling literally everyone murderers and thieves, he may not be quite all there. So let's check out this item shop. Sigh, not another customer. Buy, sell, buy, sell. That's all I do, just go away. <laughs> he is a terrible shop owner. And he says, don't mind the boss, he gets like that sometimes. Perhaps I can help you out. Let's try buying something. Oh, it looks like we have zero gold. We are flat broke. So we're not gonna be buying anything right now. That's a shame. Apparently training all day does not pay. Let's check out the end. Bad times, my friend. Not a guest in two weeks. Now, I think now is a good time to mention. Let's talk to this guy first. Be careful, Drupidus. The knights resent the time Lord Vario spends training you. So there are inns, um, but it's worth noting that this game is a pretty simplified RPG. You don't need to stay at the inn to recover your health. You immediately recover your health exiting combat. All right, let's head over here. Oh, I can't talk to the person first. So I'm gonna shove this cart into this person. Hey, watch it, pal. How'd you like it if I tried to run you over with a cart? He's not wrong. That's a very rude thing to do. But this is supposed to teach you that these carts can be moved for a teeny little puzzle coming up later. Let's talk to this dog. Grr, woof, woof, arf. I'm glad that they put stuff like that in. I don't know why it would occur to you as a player to talk to a dog, but it is satisfying that the dog has something to say, even if it's just dog noises. Sorry, but I'm busy packing. Grandpa's out somewhere. He has time to talk. I think she's referring to her grandpa in the bar, but I could be wrong about that. The Warrior's Code, all about weapons and many more books. Yeah, that's definitely him. Grandpa was once the best warrior in all of Rune, but that was a long time ago. Yep, that poor old man. Nobody thinks anything of him anymore. Hand axe techniques, hunt for the axe of legend, and many more books. Yeah, he loves reading about uh, axes and swordplay and things like that. Reliving the old times. So I'm glad we talked to him. Someone should listen to his old man stories, right? We're all upset about our daughter's nightmare. Do you think it means anything? Well, what nightmare? I haven't gotten to talk to her yet. If I could... There we go. <laughs> I, I had an awful dream. The whole town burned down. Sniff. Our house, too. And she says, my poor girl, I can't seem to calm her down. That is a bad dream. I hope it doesn't mean anything, but my guess is that if they were going to put it in the game, it probably does. Okay, where do I want to go? Let's head to the castle here. 
No one enters here without Lord Varios' permission. Fair enough. This is Gardania Castle, and I believe he's got the same thing to say, as castle guards usually do. They're so well-trained that they just say exactly the same things uh, as the other guy. Sometimes I wish that it would be a situation where one of them always tells the truth and the other one lies, you know? Watch out, Jerupidus. There are real knights training out here. You might get hurt. Yeah, everybody thinks we're a little baby. The Gardania knights have no need of you, Jerupidus. Yeah, some of them really don't like us because they're jealous that Lord Varios sees something in us. Beat it, Jerupidus. This training field's too rough for the likes of you. <laughs> Whew, training wears me out. I know the feeling. Don't let them get to you, Jerupidus. Some knights are always complaining. So there's at least one sympathetic knight. We've trained until our arms are ready to fall off. When will we see battle? Well, be careful what you wish for. We'll make quick work of those Runefaust beasts. Says you. These are my quarters. Find someplace else to sleep. Yeah, they really don't like us. A great view from the top of this tower. You can see forever. Well, let's go check it out. Oh my, what a lovely view. And let's search the telescope. It is indeed a lovely view. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's the whole reason you come up here. You don't even get a look at it. It just tells you it's a lovely view. And what even is this? Yes, it's an interesting tower, isn't it? So much to see and do. He doesn't really give us an explanation. And I seem to think there's nothing unusual here, but this looks pretty unusual to me. And now I am, of course, blocked in. Like any good old-school RPG, the townsfolk are super annoying and constantly blocking where you're trying to walk. It's just great. I will never stop loving that. King seems very worried. Do you know why? No, I don't. My guess is that the thoughts of the Gate of the Ancients trouble our noble king. Interesting. Greetings, Jerubinus. I am May Varios' daughter. The other knights feel that father has wasted his time on you. We shall see. She's skeptical, but at least she's not straight up mean to us. What kind of treasure? I'm not sure. Something really valuable, I guess. Does he mean in here? Oh? Huh? Now I see some treasure boxes behind him. Let's try to get to them. And he says, hey, cut that out. You can't just push your way in here. Get out. I do like that you can shove him down there to get a look at all the treasure, but you can't grab it. So let's move on. Oh, these townsfolk, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, let's head into the castle. There doesn't seem to be anything left to do. And the king says, that is the story, Varios. And Varios says, hmm, then your majesty, we have no choice but to send Jerupidus, a young fighter. Oh, Jerupidus, good. I was going to look for you. First, listen to the king. But the first thing I want to do is talk to this guy. Uh, this is Nova, and he says, first you must listen to what the king has to say. This is the king's advisor. He has the same thing to say. I don't think he ever gets a name, um, but he's kind of a jerk, and I don't really like him. She says, Gur, I'm so mad. Do you want to know why? Sure, tell me all your problems, lady. It's that Tao. How dare she call herself a mage? If she's a mage, I'm a footstool. Apparently, Tao, some of the ladies have the same opinion that the knights do of us. Basically that she's an amateur and she sucks. <laughs> the Princess's Primer, I Was a Tomboy Princess, and many more books. I love that. Your First Spark, Tales of Autrant, and many more books. Autrant is a place we haven't heard about yet either. Your First Blaze, Pointers for Mages, and many more books. 
Manorina, Land of Magic, Attack Magic for Beginners, and many more books. Manorina is a place we've heard about already, but it is a place where mages learn to be mages. Princess Henri is away in Manorina. Do you know about the land of Manorina? Let's say no, we don't. We don't know much about it, at least. Manorina holds an arcane college where the best mages are trained. Interesting. So that's where Henri has gone. And I don't know if they've said it yet, but Henri is the king's daughter. We have one more place to explore, I think. Pardon me, I must clean the I must clean the king's bedroom. No time to talk. Messy, messy, messy. It doesn't look that messy, but I find the idea of a king who is a total slob to be hilarious. Speaking of slob kings, let's go talk to him. For centuries, our people have watched the gate of the ancients as its guardians, hence the name Gardania. Beyond that gate lies we know not what, not even if it is of the light or the darkness. But the ancients knew, and they sealed it beyond the gate and set us as guards. Well, it doesn't sound like it's something that's of the light if we're sealing whatever it is in. And now we find that we may have failed in our mission, our reason for existence. Signs have been seen that the forces of Runefoss are at the gate of the ancients. Whatever evil they are planning, we must stop it at all costs and at once. And Varios says, but we must not panic the people. A small group of young but skilled warriors... Nova says, yes, he could do it. He could leave town unnoticed and have a chance to succeed, perhaps. The king says, yes, Nova, I agree. Drupidus, will you take the task? And of course we will. Come on. Sounds fun. Very well. Now return to town and gather your troops. Come back when you're ready. And we're going to do exactly that. All right, and here is a first look at some of the team. Uh, that's Luke. So he says, wait, Jerupidus, Nova sent us. We're going with you. I am Luke the Warrior. And he has kind of a clown nose, but I think he's cool anyway. Ken the Knight, at your service. I'll follow you wherever you lead. He is the horse guy in the top left. I am Tao. I'm only an apprentice mage, but I'll do my best. I am Hans, an elven archer. I'm coming, but don't put me in the front lines, okay? And that's supposed to be a little clue about how you're supposed to position your units. And if you don't know what that means quite yet, we're going to talk about the battle system in this game in just a little bit. Luke says, meet us at headquarters, back in the castle. So if you're thinking right now... And Lo says, hey, Jerupidus, don't try to sneak out of town without me. Lowe's a good dude. I like him. And Nova says, now that you have your comrades, return to the king to hear his final commands. I'll follow your progress and offer advice as you face the vile hordes of Runefaust. Well, that's settled. See you at headquarters. And now Nova says he's gonna offer us advice, but his advice is not super helpful. Thankfully, once again, this is a pretty simplified RPG. You can't really go wrong in this game if you just talk to everyone and exhaust all of your options for things to do. There's really no getting lost, no getting stuck. It's definitely a beginner level game. And the plot is also fairly bare bones. We're a kid that nobody thinks much of, and we go on a quest to stop the ultimate evil from returning, pretty much. That's pretty much it. The other thing is, uh, this game has a huge cast of characters, but none of them really affect the plot or have stories of their own. But the game, it still feels okay in spite of that, and I'll kind of explain why as we go. Um, but we've already talked to everyone, so there's really nothing to do but head back to the castle, so why don't we do that? The king says you have your troops, but you need supplies. Take this to purchase what you need. And now the game calls them coins, but in shops they're referred to as gold. So I may say that interchangeably, but the money system in this game is referred to as coins. And the king says a cart will take you to the gate of the ancients. Go now and carry out your task. 
Fario says, I'll leave everything to you. I must fortify the castle. Of course you gotta fortify the castle. And the advisor says it'll never work. We're doomed, I tell you. Doomed. He has absolutely no faith in me whatsoever. And they all have the same things to say. And there's really nothing to do but get to the first fight. So, in spite of the fact that the plot is bare bones and derivative, and the cast of characters um, doesn't really add anything to the story uh, in and of themselves, uh, this game is awesome, and we're about to see why. Now, earlier they would have blocked me from leaving. Now they say, I see that you have the king's permission to leave. Good luck. An interesting thing that you can do is because they're not set to block the pathway, you can sort of bully this guy into walking down just by sort of following him around, by staying above him. He will eventually choose down because he doesn't have any other option. And you can push him in the way of the guards. And then you can get out of town and face the first battle alone. Which is cool, but certainly not something you actually want to do. Lowe says, Jerupidus, goblins, Runefoss must be up to something. Tau says, we can take them, Jerupidus. And the knight here says, move it, Furman, find the key to this blasted door. Now, I think that this guy has a word of the day calendar, and blast is his word of the day, because check this out. Come on, we're almost in. Where is that blasted key? What? Blast it! Those fools from Cardania are here. <laughs> And there is immediately a terrifying earthquake. Cool. Attack goblins and dwarves. Strike a blow for the honor of Runefaust. Now, like any good hero, the first thing we're gonna do in the very first battle of the game is run away. Nova says, Jerupidus, do you really want to retreat from this battle? Yes, I do. And I want to do that for a couple of reasons. Um, but the first of which is this. If we come over here, we can talk to this guy. And he says, I am gone. I have fought the evil of Runefoss for many years. I will aid you. So this is our introduction to a system of optional characters. And this was back before really the internet is was what it is today, where you couldn't just look up how to do all this stuff. You had to kind of find all these optional characters by experimentation. And speaking of optional characters, let's check out this guy. And he says, Greetings, Jerupidus. I have been waiting for you. But he does not join. And if you're wondering, is that a hamster wearing a helmet? Uh, it is. His name is Jogurt, and he is supposed to be kind of a comic relief mascot for this series. We'll talk a little bit more about him when he actually joins the force, but we're going to leave him there for now. He says, well, what a surprise. Rarely do we have guests in such a remote area. I am a friar, though I may not look it. How can I help you? So this is the priest slash friar system. These are the guys that can save your game. Um, they can raise fallen allies if they've died in combat. Once you get out of combat, they can promote your classes. Every class in this game, save for a couple of characters, can be promoted starting at level 10 and all the way through 20 or beyond you can promote them. We'll talk a little bit more about that when it becomes relevant, but it is similar to the class change system or I would say like a rudimentary job system from Final Fantasy games, and that's sort of what I mean when I say this game is derivative. It doesn't have a ton of original ideas, save for the combat system. And also, he can cure you if you have been cursed, which we will talk about when that becomes relevant, or poison. Poison does follow you from battle to battle, where life and MP, magic loss, do not. You immediately recover those, but you do stay poisoned. So the priest can fix that for you. 
May the powers of light be always with you, Jerufidus. Thank you. Same to you. She says, strange things are in the woods. They give me the creeps. I don't like the sound of that either, but apparently there are just monsters everywhere now. Now let's get back to that fight. And I'm sure you noticed when we first came here, this does not look like your typical turn-based RPG fight. And it is not. This is an SRPG. And what an SRPG is, is a strategic RPG, a strategy RPG game. Your units all sit on this grid system and can move per turn. Um, and this is really what saves this game from just being purely mediocre and makes it into something amazing. This was the first SRPG I ever played. Um, it was not the first one in the world. There were other similar games. But to me, this was when this genre kind of came into its own. Where do I want to go? I kind of don't want to sit here. So there's a lot to talk about with the systems at play here, but you can see in the top left it says land effect 30%. That's going to affect how much I can move on my next turn. So these squares are all zero, but I don't really want to leave myself hanging out here. Like, I don't want to move here because... Getting impatient and leaving someone hanging, you can you can talk about this game very easily in chess terms. Um, I'm not covered, so someone else can't get to me and cover me and help me. Which could be a serious problem because me, I'm the hero. If I die in combat, the battle's over. Now, there aren't really any real penalties. Once again, this is kind of a beginner RPG for losing in combat. If I die, we just start the battle over. We keep all of our experience and everything else like that. Um, but if I die, we lose half our money. Money in this game is not super relevant. Um... You're never hurting for cash, so that's not even really that much of a penalty. It's just kind of embarrassing, mostly. <laughs> so let's start with Ken. Ken is holding his spear, so he can attack two squares in front of him, which is very good, as you might expect. So Ken's going to hit for six and gain 16 experience points. Now, how the experience points in this game work is basically you get experience per action, and you get a huge bonus piece of XP for killing a monster. So a hit of seven gives me 18. If I if I strike the killing blow on one of these, uh, it's gonna give me something like 48. So let's try that out. I'm gonna get in there. Six and I kill him. 48 XP, gotta love that. That is the maximum amount of XP you can get for an action. So you're only ever going to get 48 for a kill. Now, I'm going to do a little strategy here where I save the kills for characters that I'm going to keep. Because this game has a huge roster of characters, and you end up... Uh, only keeping some of the ones that you start with. But you don't have to do that. Like, you could keep all of them. Tao is going to cast Fire. Gain 45 XP. For some reason, she didn't get 48 there. That's kind of odd, but whatever. And this, uh... tutorial battle, the enemies are kind of statues. There will come a time later where they break formation um, and come after you, but I think in this one they mostly just stand still to get you accustomed to the battle system. But we're going to save a lot of the kills for me. We're going to save some of the kills. Oh, they do break formation. Cool. Uh, we're going to save the kills for me, Luke, and Tao pretty much. And I just love these battle sequences. Um, they do different backgrounds for every single tile you're on, which I think is just awesome. And that's kind of the attention to detail. I'm going to get hit here. But fortunately, it's not very much. It's only four. 
Man, there's just so much to talk about in this game. I'm, I'm like, a little overwhelmed right now. <laughs> I'm gonna try to take it slow, but I really, really love this game, so I just have a ton to say about it. Um, so another thing with these battle sequences, you'll notice... They have kind of a storyboard animation style to them, right? Where the characters move in sort of a slideshow. And I think that's because in the development of this game, they didn't really all allocate it a very good budget. I'm gonna get hit again, it's gonna be four. Now a uh, sort of storyboard animation style like that I've seen before in uh, Bayonetta, the first one. And the reason that happened in that game was because they ran out of money. And I suspect that that's what's going on here as well. Now, I think I'm gonna level up here because I'm gonna get 48 again. Yep, so I'm up to two. And now level ups are based around RNG. You really never know what you're gonna get, but I do get attack one, defense one, and speed one and maximum magic. That doesn't matter. I'm only ever going to have one spell, which is called Egress. But let's make sure I'm healed up. The Egress spell uh, escapes from combat. There are a fixed number of battles in this game, so the only way you can grind for experience is by escaping from battle and playing it again. The battle will completely reset... I don't really like Hans' position here. If I put him up here, he's gonna get hit. So we'll just leave him here. So that is a way that you can grind for experience in this game, escaping battles and returning to them. Everything will completely reset and you can do everything over. Okay, I don't like Ken's position here either, but I think what I can do... Yeah, let's put him here, hit the goblin, and then we'll be able to kill the Goblin and the Dark Dwarf in the same turn. But you don't ever really have to grind for experience. Ooh, nice dodge, Ken. Whew. That could have been bad. You can definitely play through this game without ever repeating a battle, if you're good. There are certain battles that I'm going to want to repeat because they have item drops, but in general, I'm going to try to not repeat any battles and just play it straight through. I think Gong will not kill this guy, so I think this is fine. Yep. And now you'll notice when my healer is casted heal. This could be ugly. I'm kind of surprised he's already attacking. Okay. Yeah, let's hit him with a blaze, and then we should be able to take them out with the next two turns. Now, that's not to say that I'm never going to lose a fight, but we're going to do our best. We're going to hit that Rune Knight for four, and I hope that he doesn't break formation and kill... Ken, <laughs> because I can't get to him, so I did kind of leave him hanging there. I have no way of healing him. Okay, nice. So the AI definitely prioritizes going for the hero, because if you lose the hero, uh, you lose the fight. So the AI really likes to go for the instant win. But I tend to play a little bit fast and loose with the hero because he is actually pretty good. And that's nice because you have to bring him with you into combat. Oh no, he missed. That is terrible. Oh, double attack. Nice. So that's another mechanic where you can sometimes attack twice. And Luke's going to level up and just gets one more hit point. And that's what I mean about the level ups being kind of the worst. So Tao can't really do anything anymore, so let's just leave her back. Okay, he's gonna hit Hans. Hopefully he doesn't kill Hans. 
Not quite. All right, perfect. You can get level ups in this game where you get nothing. Like, nothing happens. You just go from level 8 to level 9, and literally nothing happens. It's kind of amazing, honestly. I really don't want Hans to score the killing shot here. I don't think he's going to deal 5, though. Let's see. Alright, he missed anyway. Great job, Hans. You suck. <laughs> kind of wish I could get to... Get to Ken there, but we'll cast heal on Hans. And this will bring up why I don't really like healers in this game. Healers are rarely going to get a kill shot on an enemy. They routinely deal one damage. So if you have an enemy fall to one HP, you can send your healer in there to kill him. But that's rare, and it also risks your healer because they might miss because they're not proficient in combat. Save for Gong. Gong can get good at combat, but generally speaking, he's pretty bad. So what ends up happening is your healers just gain 10 XP at a time from casting heal. And that is, of course, nearly uh, five times more for a kill shot, so they fall behind really quickly. But we've won the fight. Fools, you have won here, but Lord Kane of Runefoss is even now attacking Gardania. Nova says, if that creature spoke truly, we must return to help defend Gardania. Yep, they did a classic uh, misdirection maneuver here where... While we were busy with this, they hit Gardania while we weren't there. Runefoss did, I should say. And Nova says the earthquake blocked the road. Head north, but be ready for battle. No one enters Gardania while we live. For Dark Soul. Death to Gardania. Death to Gardania. Now, this tutorial battle is supposed to teach you about terrain's effect on your movement. And now I want to get it out of my brain before I forget to talk about it. Um... We're actually... Yeah, let's just have him back up. Turn order in this game is not as well thought out as later games of this style, where your turn order is pretty much determined by a random seed, and then your speed stat affects it. But it ends up feeling pretty random, and you also have no ability to determine whose turn is going to be next other than kind of your intuition which can certainly fail you, and you can get wrecked. <laughs> you can't pull up a list that says, like, here's who's next. Which most later SRPG games allow you to do, so you can kind of plan things a little more effectively. Like, you can be like, oh, this monster's turn is next, I better deal with him before he hits one of my guys that have low HP. And while this tutorial battle... I mean, this is kind of a real battle, it's not quite a tutorial battle, but it does have this new mechanic of your movement being absolutely crippled by these mountains. Um, while it's a good lesson and good to know about, and certainly something that you'd want to show your player, this outside terrain often is just an absolute slog. You can move like two steps per turn, there's one step. So it just takes you forever to get there, but it leaves you plenty of time to think about your life choices and why you'd be playing a Sega Genesis game at age 36. <laughs> On your extremely expensive gaming PC, no less. But I tell you what, I'm perfectly comfortable with it. I feel good. Let's have Hans take some pot shots here, soften these guys up. While we're trekking through these mountains at a snail's pace, I just want to talk- Wow, it's already Hans' turns again? What? <laughs> yeah, I just want to talk about what makes this game such a classic, and it's literally this. The combat system and the music. 
every single track in this game is just fantastic. I just love it. Um, that's not gonna be a kill shot. So, your greatest enemy... There's not a ton of strategy to this, despite it being a strategy game. But your greatest enemy is getting impatient and leaving someone hanging. Because by now, you're probably thinking, Oh, I can finally do something, I can finally attack someone, let's just get in there. But that is a mistake. Especially when you're at such a low level. Okay, I think right here is good. Because if, if you're running in there, and you get one attack, and then the enemy gets like three counterattacks on you, for example, like they could in this situation, uh, that is very bad. You will end up messed up in losing a character. And losing a character in this, as you might imagine, uh, really cripples your ability to finish the fight strong. And by that, I mean absolutely swarming the final enemy, who in later fights is going to be a boss of some kind. And we'll talk more about those when we see them, but suffice to say for now, bosses in this game are fairly obnoxious with regard to how they work. And we're just gonna keep being patient despite how bad it feels. Uh, I don't want Hans to get a kill shot there. So why don't we just wait, I suppose? All right, um, yeah, I'm gonna keep waiting. Because I want my healers to catch up. And I can kind of flank around to the side here with some of my ranged units, so that's gonna be the plan. And I want my healers to be in the actual back row and not a few steps behind, so that they can cast heal immediately on hits. Yep, we're gonna wait one more turn. Nope, I still don't want to attack. Because I want those sweet, sweet 48 XP... ...kill shots for my characters that I'm gonna keep. So that can be another tricky thing about the strategy element of this, is... ...making sure that you're... ...saving the kills for your preferred characters. Seven on the goblin. Nice job, Tao. And she's gonna get to level two. Four extra MP? That's actually a pretty incredible level up. And I think that the RNG-based level up system... It kind of sucks in that you often get a very displeasing level up. But it adds a lot of replay value. Only 34 XP there? Yikes. Uh, it adds a lot of replay value because you end up sometimes diverging from your usual plan because of characters getting better than usual level ups and making you want to keep them around. Which happened to me on my last playthrough of this game. So we'll see what happens with this one. You honestly never know. So while I don't think it's a amazing or particularly well thought out system, it does lead to replayability, which is nice. So do I even want to do this? I guess so. I don't think I'm going to deal eight, but we'll see. Yep, only five. Oh, but I get another level up. Awesome. Back up by two, defense by two, speed by one, and HP by three. That's a pretty good level up. I don't want Ken to score this kill shot, so we're just going to stay. But I do want Luke to score this kill shot. Thirty XP for Luke. Very nice. And honestly, I love the sound design in this game. 
I'm going to talk a lot about the music, but I want to wait until we hear some more tracks before I get too much into that. But I find this walking sound very satisfying. It's just a good sound. It's a good design. And the sort of card flipping noise that comes with making a... Uh, taking actions. Oh, I did not want to do this. Got distracted. Please miss. Thank you, Hans. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. <laughs> I can't wait to get rid of him. Alright, let's get another kill shot for Luke. This might put him to level 3, which would be nice. But the card flipping noise when, you know, the boxes appear on the screen and you and you make uh, take actions, make selections and things, I also think is just a great piece of sound design. It's all really, really good. Now, I don't want to put Tau, so let's check out this goblin. He is at full health. I do not want to put Tau in front of him, so we're just going to wait. This is a good spot for Hans. And we still have quite a ways to go, but we did finally make it close to out of the mountains where we're going to be able to move properly again pretty soon. Now let's think about this. I think I want to stand between Tau and this goblin. That way Tau can move up a square. And now, I think I mentioned before that the damage output in this game is pretty predictable. And that's true. However, there's a, another double attack. So you randomly, and enemies, can randomly attack twice. Yep, why don't we do... I think I'm going to save that one for Tau, so let's swing here and see if I can't get six. I doubt it. Just five, okay. But Luke gets to level three, that's awesome. Speed by one, HP by three, and that's it. No more attack, like, you often don't actually get better with levels up. <laughs> but to finish my thought about damage and damage predictability, I think I can just get in there behind this one. I don't know if that helps, though. So I still want Tau to kill this one, so yeah, let's just hit this one. So, you do get those random double swings, and in this game, there are also critical hits, which are called stunning attacks. Yeah, we'll save that one for Tau. Yeah. So, you could be going along, and the goblins are hitting you for three, and then randomly they get a double attack and both of them crit. Now that is extremely rare for that to happen, but it can happen. So a goblin could randomly deal you something like 12 out of nowhere. I do not want to do that, so let's just stay. Um, which can really mess you up once in a while. You can just be like, oh my god. <laughs> And if they do it to the hero, you can just instantly lose the fight and feel like a total moron. Through no real fault of your own. Twenty-eight for Tau, that's nice. I'm gonna try to get her a kill on one of these uh dark dwarves. Uh, yeah, I can attack from up top on one of these. That'll be good. 
Hopefully they're not smart enough to come after Hans here, but... I'm hoping that I can drop them before that happens, but we'll see. Okay. You got me. I left him hanging. That is my fault. Yep, there's a double attack, and now Hans is almost dead. And it... I feel like the game really likes to get you when you leave someone hanging with something brutal like a double attack or a crit. Now that, of course, is probably confirmation bias. But... It still feels like it. I think I can land an attack here and not have to spend a blaze. Yeah, let's do that. Perfect. Yeah, this attack on Luke will be no problem. And so, as you're beginning to see, you have your tank characters... Let's see here. Can I hit this one? I think that's maybe a better idea. Yeah, let's do that. Nice! Deadly attack. Sorry, when, it, when an enemy hits you with it, it's a stunning attack. Deadly attacks are crits for us. To me, it kind of feels like, uh... The meme where you're like, Mom, I want critical hits. And your mom's like, we have critical hits at home. And the critical hits at home are deadly attacks. <laughs> but really... All of my... We're gonna have Gong stay here to make sure that this Dark Dwarf doesn't hit Tao. But really all of my... Sort of loving, joking, teasing of this game is all really rooted in a place of being a huge fan of it nonetheless. Because this combat is just so much fun to play. It really makes you feel like you're making meaningful decisions a lot more so than I would say the turn-based combat of your typical JRPG. Yep, and this is a classic just swarm where we just get turn after turn and the enemy doesn't get to go. And so we wreck him before he gets to take an action. And that is why you don't want to get impatient and leave someone hanging. You want to stay in formation as much as you can. That's very important. Do I need a heal? I don't. Okay, you can just stay there then. But I am going to leave him by Gong so Gong can cast heal on him. Because he doesn't really have anything better to do. Yep, why not? Now, there's nothing wrong with leveling your healers, per se. Like, you can do that. But it's just very difficult to have them actually keep up and stay relevant. Yep, you want to stay by Gong, but Gong can probably get to him over here. Can't go anywhere. I just love the kind of stop motion storyboard animation. I just think every attack and every action in the battle system just looks great and really cool. And that kind of feeds into what I was talking about before where none of the characters really add all that much to the story. They basically get an introduction and a cool character model. But honestly, that's enough in a lot of ways to make you form emotional attachments and opinions of characters.
And I think that's really cool. Obviously, there are games that have done this sort of large roster thing much, much better. Namely, Final Fantasy VI is just a way, way better game where every character has their own piece of plot dedicated to them. And all of them actually feel like real characters. Almost nobody in this game actually feels like a real character. They are just a few lines of text and a sprite, and that's about it. But once again, because the battle system is so much fun to play, it really papers over a lot of this game's weaknesses. So another reason I was calling this a tutorial fight is that this part right here really drives home the idea that your ranged attackers can use terrain to their advantage to attack enemies that can't really attack them back. Now, obviously, the AI could come across the bridge, but then they put themselves in a really bad spot. And I'm not going to cross the bridge yet. I'm going to wait. But this range attacker thing definitely comes in handy in several fights. You can kind of cheese them a little bit. Hans leveled up and he gets one more speed. Great. <laughs> Just fantastic. Alright, I think I want Tau on that tile, so I'm gonna wait here. Alright, Ken with the double attack. Don't hate it. Gon can wait because he's out of MP, so he's kind of useless. I could have picked up healing items so that my healers still have something to do, but it really doesn't matter that much. Okay, so I'm just checking. That guy's got two, that guy's got six. So I can drop both of these. But I think I'm going to hit the dwarf. The reason is because if Luke gets in trouble... Ken and Hans can bail him out. And I want Tao to have the finishing shot on Dark Dwarf. And hopefully this works out. That's six. Okay. Hopefully they don't all three get a turn in a row. little worried about this decision I just made, so I think I'm going to attack. If he drops him, I think that's just for the best. He does not. Okay. I should have probably waited until he was at two, but I think I'm going to have Ken drop this one to make sure that it doesn't get an extra turn or anything like that and end up killing Luke. Let's hit this one. I think Luke can survive a hit from that Dark Dwarf, save a double attack or a crit, so let's just drop this one. Luke's up to level 4, attack up by 1, defense by 3, and HP by 1. That's a decent level up. He will definitely survive that Dark Dwarf attack now, but let's hit it with a blaze. I don't think this is going to kill it, unfortunately. Who do we got left? Well-timed heal. That'll be that'll be nice. Yep, Luke's gonna be just fine now. 
And enemies are already only dealing him one, which is just great. Now I'm gonna take the kill shot on this thing, I think. Why not? Maybe I can get to level four. No, I cannot, but we won. And Nova says, well done, Shining Force. Now enter Gardania and find out what's happened there. And we are definitely going to do that, but this episode is already running a little bit long. These battles, as you can see, are going to end up taking a long time each. So we're going to head into Gardania, but that's going to have to wait until next time because I'm all out of time for today. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.